एवरीवन आई होप यू आर लर्निंग अ लॉट फ्रॉम ब्यू जे एस नेशन कॉन्फ्रेंस एंड आई एम सो ग्लैड टू बी स्पीकिंग हियर टूडे माई नेम इज अनवरा कुमारी एंड टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू शो यू हाउ यू कैन टेस्ट वॉट एवर यू आर बिल्डिंग लाइक वेबसाइट एंड एप्लीकेशन फॉर एक्सेसिबिलिटी सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड Uh, a bit of introduction about myself i'm working as a front end consultant at passionate people i'm google developer expert for web microsoft mvp cloudinary md and women tech makers ambassador and you can find me on socials at linkedin at linkedin uh, anwara15 and on twitter at miracle_404 so the topics that we will be discussing today we will start with introduction of accessibility and then we will see how to test for accessibility and i will share some tips and tools with you so uh, you can scan the qr code on the screen or go to the link tinyurl.com forward slash view js hyphen a11y hyphen testing and you will get a link to these slides so you can either if you want to follow along you can open them now or reference it for later Let's get started. So what exactly is accessibility? Accessibility, which is also neuro named as A eleven Y, here eleven refers to the number of letters between A and Y. It means making resources and services usable by everyone, regardless of their disabilities. Why is accessibility important? It is important because we build for our users, and the users can be very diverse. They can have different types of disabilities. as per who or world health organization around 15% of world population lives with some form of disability and this counts to around 1 billion people around the world so there are different types of disabilities like visual auditory motor and cognitive and microsoft inclusive design has a very nice guideline where it also categorizes these disabilities further into permanent temporary and situational i would highly recommend to go ahead and give this document a read because it really puts a lot of things into perspective and makes us think better towards making everything more inclusive so since there are different types of users different types of disabilities hence there are multiple ways in which users can access the web and these are also called assistive technologies and the most common one is keyboard yes keyboard it is an assistive technology and many users rely on keyboard to access the web so we need to ensure that whatever we are building it also works with these assistive technologies so that all the users can access our websites and can take uh, all the services which we are providing or buy the products which these websites are selling right then there is also something called screen reader or narrator so every device which we have maybe laptop computer or uh, uh, mobiles they have some sort of voice over or screen reader a native one with them <laughs> then there are also the uh, more complex uh, assistive technologies like braille display switch and so on so uh since we have uh, users can use it in different ways so we need to ensure that whatever we are creating is a uh, working uh, with all these assistive technologies and we can actually make things accessible by following proper guidelines uh, so today i'm going to show mainly that how can we test for accessibility right so we are going to discuss three things the first one is how to we test using keyboard then we will also see some of the browser tools and extensions through which we can test for accessibility then we will see also some of the examples in how and what we can test for screen readers so the first one is using keyboard what to test for when we are using a keyboard so the first thing which we can test for is uh, interactivity so uh, are all the interactive elements reachable on a website so go ahead open the website that you are uh, using or maybe something your favorite website where you really like to go and uh, you can test and see if uh, everything is working properly or not so for today's example i'm going to use glovo and there is a disclaimer that it's not intended to point out this website in a particular it's for demo and uh, we all can uh, improve seeing all these examples right so it's just for demo and uh, any point of improvement we can do it 
So let's check it. So the interactive elements like uh, there could be buttons, form elements, anchors, uh, and so on. Now you need to go and click on it, right, to perform some action. So let's say someone is just using a keyboard. So how are they going to perform that action? For that, they will be using their keyboard. They maybe will be using the tab, and they will go. They will maybe use their arrow keys to navigate between sub elements and so on, right? So here. Uh, I am at GlovoApp.com website and what I'm trying to do is I would just try to tap through and see if uh, I can reach to certain elements and uh, I can understand where I am. So like I press tab once, I press tab again and uh, I don't see any vis visual feedback on where I am currently at this website, right? I press tab again and here I think that okay I am in the address uh, I can place add my address or something so I am in this form element right now okay cool but now I press tab again and I'm pressing five six seven times and I still don't know where I am this uh, cursor blinking uh, gives me a notion that maybe I am stuck here and I am not able to move forward but no uh, when I was testing and I saw it again actually it's moving forward uh, but uh, since there is no outline or a focus ring on it we are not able to know where we are currently now this is a uh, not very helpful for the users because users if they don't know where they are if they cannot understand the flow they won't be able to proceed in this website right so uh, there could uh, i will show you a good example which is like a uk government website so here if let's say i'm doing the same i will just try to press tab and see if i can just perform some action using keyboard so yes i know where i am currently right so uh, let's say i want to visit the uk we I know that here is the link and I am currently on this link so I can go ahead and uh, press enter and it will take me so like basically it it gives me a nice feedback that where I am and I know that what is happening so it is quite accessible right so uh, I have a bad throat sorry about that but uh, yeah so and how, why is this happening so if we go ahead and if we inspect so i try to just inspect and this is also one of the examples in which how we can debug our uh, uh, some of the accessibility issues using a browser as well so if i inspect and go to let's say this button and i want to see that why the focus ring was not available so can go hover and say that hey focus on it and i see that still it's not focused why uh, because there is a specific styling which says outline none and as soon as I remove it now the focus is visible right so this is just one line of code but it does a lot uh, so either we can remove this or we can use some custom uh, outline if we want right like this uh, UK government website they have these custom out uh, there are many examples of different custom outlines which can be used the, the main motto is that users should get to know that where they are currently which is the currently focused element and so on the second thing is that even when I get a focus on this I should be able to perform the action on it right like I should be able to say press enter and then add my delivery address so here it works and I really like it because yes it works so I press enter and it took me to the delivery address and I can maybe write some um, address here and it will work and so on so we are not going to take and I can use arrow keys on these as well so this is how it should work so we can use our keyboard and try different functionality and see if these are working properly or not so this is the second point is that even if we reach an interactive element can these be acted upon so uh, the issues which we uh, saw and the issues which could happen are like outline none is one of the very common issues and in which the users don't get to know where they are currently because the focus is removed right we saw an example then if we use none semantic html and we don't write a proper code then what happens is that even if users can tab on it like maybe we put some uh, styles and we put tab index is equal to zero so even a div or a span comes into tab order right but still we cannot press enter or we cannot activate the we cannot trigger the action using keyboard because they are non semantic html and we need to write extra code for that so 
that's why using semantic html is uh, considered the best practice uh, whenever possible and uh, these issues which we saw they uh, the reason was that it was not tested maybe enough using keyboard and so we did not find out these issues so if we could just test using keyboard we will uh, really find out lots of these issues in the early phase and we can fix it and make things more accessible right now we will see some of the browser tools and extensions uh, the most uh, what important thing is DevTools, right? In DevTools, we find multiple things in which we can test the accessibility, like Lighthouse. This is in Chrome DevTools. You can use Lighthouse to audit the website for accessibility. Then there is an Axe extension. And actually, Lighthouse is also powered by Axe under the course. So, yes. And uh, then there is Accessibility Pane. And uh, Microsoft has this extension uh, accessibility in sites for web, which is also a very nice way to test. So let's see some of these and uh, how can we test. So uh, like we saw, let's, uh, let's open the DevTools right now. And uh, first thing which we can see here is accessibility pane, which is really nice one. And I figured it out very late and it's, it's very nice like ev ever since I figured it out it's, it's pretty nice and I like using it a lot so um, we, when we go to open the dev tools we go to elements tab and then we can go to this pane called accessibility pane here uh, we can inspect any element. So let's say this is a button. We inspect the button and we get lots of information. So this is the information which is actually passed on to the assistive technologies, all those. So this is the information which they use to forward the information to the user. So here it says that, okay, this is a button and it is focusable and so on. And the name is get started. So uh, we can know a lot about any element even by just going and checking the accessibility pane. Then the second one is uh, using DevTools, so like um, Lighthouse. Yeah. So what we can do is that in Chrome, uh, I'm using Chrome. So in Chrome, we can open the DevTools. There is a tab for a lighthouse. And here we can say that, hey, I want to check for accessibility and analyze page load. It reloads and gives a nice overview of the issues which it detects. Now, a very important thing to note here is all these tests are actually automatic tests. So they won't cover 100% of accessibility issues. In fact, uh, some of the study shows that it's like maybe 30 to 40 percent of accessibility issues can be cast by these uh, automatic tools right so uh, that we need to ensure that we should not just focus on this right like uh, there is 88 score so if it's 100 it doesn't mean that it's 100 percent accessible there's nothing called 100 percent accessibility so it just means that these are the easy wins and these we can detect easily and fix right so for example, there are some errors. Image element does not have an alt attribute. And when I come here, I can click on this and it will take me to the element in the elements pane. And actually these images are the image in this uh, animation. Then links do not have discernible names. So let's say there are multiple links here and I can go and say scroll into view. So there are two links for downloading and they do not have name, um, do not have name on it. So there is no label or so it's an anchor with an image and the image does not have any alt text or something. So basically there is no text, hence this link has no name. So users who are just reliant on a screen reader, they won't be able to understand that what this link does because the names won't be pronounced to the users, right? So uh, these are some of the things which we can see and then we can go ahead and fix. The third one, which is Axe, you have to install it, but it works pretty much similar as Lighthouse. Uh, so here we can go and say that, hey, can you scan the whole page? And it also gives all the issues. And we can click and actually we can go ahead and read about this error. So uh, it will take, take us to DQ University. I will just zoom in. Yeah. So uh, into DQ University uh, website and uh, 
it gives a very nice information about all these errors so i really like it because when we read it we get to know a lot about why is that is important why that rule matters or why that we need to fix that so it is pretty nice and i would like uh, uh suggest you to check it out then the other one is microsoft uh, insights uh, ins insights for web so here uh, it gets installed as an extension and if you click on the icon we get multiple options so here I'm trying to check the ad hoc tools and see. So uh, we can check different things here. Like we can click on landmarks and see that what are the different landmarks on this page. So for example, here it says that this is a landmark called banner and then there would be a content info landmark. And then, uh, so actually I used this to understand more about what was happening when I was tabbing because I felt that my focus got stuck here right but it's very cool and i really like this tab stop feature so let's open this tab stop feature and see so what it shows is that whenever i tab it shows that where the focus is going so it says that okay it went here so it shows me that okay my uh, focus was actually moving forward it's just that it was not vis visually um, giving me a feedback that i'm moving forward and so on there was no outline so this is pretty cool. I, I really like this. Uh, so you can go ahead, play around and see it really is a pretty nice tool. So the third one is a screen reader. Uh, the, as I said, there are different screen readers for each device. Um, and uh, using screen reader could be a bit complicated when we get started so i provided some of the links which also provide some shortcuts and how to use the screen readers and how a screen reader user actually surface the web it really gives a lots of information and understanding on how users really use it so let's see some of the ways in like what should we test for when we are using screen reader so the one thing which we can test for is a uh, landmark so landmarks are actually very important because they provide a structure for the page and uh, they are used actually by the users to navigate through different parts of the page so like instead of just using diff for everything we can use these landmarks like header main nav footer and so on so we make sections and so the user can understand better so for example uh, this is a screenshot of a government uk website for a landmark so if you open the voiceover in a, a mac and go ahead and uh, press the shortcut control option u a rotor comes up and it gives all these shortcuts like what are different landmarks what are the different headings and this is also used by the users to navigate it also gives all the links and all the form elements on the page. So it is really nice if we uh, put proper landmarks and put proper headings because then users can use these and to navigate through the website more properly. Then what should we test for is the alternative description for media. So if, if we have images, so there should be an alt for images so the screen reader can read that out to the user and user can understand what is the information or the transcript if we have an audio or video files. Then forms. Forms are very important. They are almost everywhere on the web, right? So labeling forms properly is really, really important. Let's take an example of what it uh, uh, like what it is for a screen reader to go through a form which is not labeled properly so i have an example and navigate edit text blank edit text blank edit text email blank edit text email blank submit button so there are multiple form elements but it doesn't know the name so it's just saying the type of the input form so and i have uh, made the filter blur uh, knowingly so that we really don't get to know what is the name we just get to feel how the screen the users can uh, feel when they are going through the all these controls so uh, we should not be using uh, any uh, element for the labeling like span div and show on uh, because they won't be labeling the input elements properly also if we are using label if we just use a label it won't work as intended instead either we can wrap the input in the label or we should use a for and 
add it as id so if the input has a id and we say label here this is a label for this input and in this way it becomes more accessible because now the label is connected to this input so uh, the recommended one is the last one because if we are wrapping the input in a label sometimes it messes with the styling but also more than that we might need to perform uh, send some more information and it might get complicated with that so uh, i always prefer the last one using a for and keeping the elements separately so if we properly label this is how the same form will uh, have for the user voice over on chrome first name edit text last name edit text email edit text email confirm email edit text email submit button so uh, users get a nice perspective on which uh, input element that they are at and what it is like uh, what they have to fill on it right so uh, here i would also like to show you once uh, how that will work with uh, uh, with how can we test also using accessibility pane so here i have this form and if we if we inspect this input because the label was using a span so this input does not have any name so it says that hey i don't see a name but if let's say the last one confirm email i have used here a proper label so it gives me that okay the name is confirm email and how does this name come it came from the label and using the for attribute so it gives a very nice information from like where the name is coming from and from which element and so on so we can use this in different ways to understand more about accessibility and debug any issues if we have then uh, the last thing is uh, dynamic changes so we can have multiple dynamic changes on a website then are they announced to the user properly right like for example a form so when the form gets submitted there is some feedback for the user then uh, if we don't make it a uh, if the u it doesn't get announced to the user user will not understand if the form was successful or there was some error and so on let's see an example uh, so here i have a form and uh, we just say that which conference are you attending right so i will i will just try to start the voiceover and uh, see what happens voiceover on chrome less than percent sys h at vu s at T -O -O -N. Nation, say hi, button. So when I say hi, press enter, uh, there is a message, welcome to Vue.js Nation conference, but it didn't get uh, announced to the user, right? So the user, if the user cannot see, they won't be able to understand what happened after I pressed enter, right? Voice over off. So how can we fix that? So uh, what we can do is there's something called aria live. So we can add these attributes aria live polite and role of status. So there are different values for this. I'm going for this because I, this is not very important that I want to interrupt the user and uh, read this message. Polite means that if something is already being read by the screen reader, let it finish and then go ahead and read this, right? So now, if we do the same again, so let's go ahead, start the voiceover and system has new voice, which conference are you, which E, at, at T, uh, uh, and say hi, button, welcome to Who's Nation conference. So it goes ahead and voice reads out off. whatever was in that live reason. So it gives user feedback and user gets to understand that what really happened on screen. So, to summarize, test all that you build using just keyboards, screen readers, browser dev tools, and extensions. And whenever you are creating something, always think from user perspective. And it's advisable to test for accessibility from the very start so we find out the issues earlier and fix it. I have an action item for you. Uh, so, Test whatever you are working on today using some of these tips and uh, yeah, see how it works. And so, so I have linked some of the resources which you can use to read more about accessibility because we just cover testing part. But if you want to read more about accessibility, you can go ahead and check some of these links. With that, thank you so much.
Hello, hello, and thank you for your presentation. I definitely, I know I was saying this earlier, but accessibility is so important. So thank, thank you. you for bringing up that topic. Now, I would say this is the first question that we're loving to ask everyone. I am curious if you have an accessibility standpoint of this, of Windows, Mac OS, or other. Uh, so I am currently using Mac for my work, but I have always been a Windows person. So please, audience, don't hate me after hearing this, but I do love Windows a lot. So I have always used Windows. My personal laptop is Windows, and I really like the ease of using and all. With Mac, I sometimes feel that I need to remember a lot. Although it's a muscle memory, still, I'm a window person. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. So far, I think almost everybody has been mostly Mac. So I dig it. <laughs> All right. So more into questions about your talk instead of just my curiosity of everybody's operating system. Uh, where does accessibility fit into, like, where do you put it when building uh, a Vue.js application? Uh, yeah, that, that's a, a great question for sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, I would say that uh, accessibility in general is for the web platform. So whether we are building with Vue.js or any other framework or even with JavaScript, so there are certain guidelines which we follow or like the main aim is to uh, make things accessible, which we are making. So if we are making an e-commerce, so the main aim is that a user should be able to use that e-commerce, right? So mm -hmm. the syntax might be different. So when you are uh, uh, adding all or it, okay. Uh, I see some lag, so sorry, no way. So yeah, so the syntax might be a bit different, but, uh, the the uh, main concepts of accessibility will remain same uh, for if for any framework. So for views is yes, uh, uh, it fits uh, right into the application. I would say we are creating. We need to ensure that it is accessible. Uh, since you're cutting up a little bit, can you try turning your camera off just to see if we have your audio a bit more? See if that works a little yeah, bit better. I, the, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. I'll go to the next question and hopefully we can um, keep you around <laughs> long enough. Um, what are some of the best practices for testing web accessibility in a development process? For best practices for testing in development process. So, uh, yeah. So, like I shared, uh, whenever we are in development process, we should, uh, start testing in that phase only uh, that would really uh, uh, lead to having more accessible products so uh, always whenever we are hitting anything tested using keyboard using screen readers use your dev tools there are certain linting um, uh, tools also available which we can use and there are also actually tests so that i didn't cover of course but there are multiple tests which we can write up uh, so we can write some tests so whenever we are creating um uh, changing made some existing uh, code and all then the test would run and they would say that uh, if we broke something even if it was accessible before and we uh, redid it or maybe we refactored it and uh, maybe uh, something broke on accessibility perspective but the automated test tests again uh, won't uh, be like won't cover all the scenarios so i would say that as a developers we should really um, test with uh, keyboards and uh, uh, some part of screen readers for sure and uh, dev tools definitely we should uh, try to incorporate it in our development process as well Thank you, Anrata. We have one more question, which I think uh, you actually brought up a little bit of uh, when you were talking about best practices. What screen reader are you using? Uh, yeah, so um, I mostly use uh, voiceover, but uh, I also have uh, my uh, uh, windows. So I also tend to uh, open the websites there. Uh, and I have NVIDIA installed on Windows. So Windows also has a narrator with it, but um, uh, NVIDIA is a, a free screen reader, which you can install for Windows. So uh, I use NVIDIA. 
but also like uh, I also shared some links for uh, reading more about uh, screen readers because they can be tricky. So it, like, uh, uh, so there is also a combination like uh, which uh, screen reader uh, goes well with uh, which uh, browser. So there is that combination also. So when you are uh, trying to use a screen reader, it would also be nice to see uh, which browser users use when they are using a particular screen reader because there's also some compatibility things as well. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. That was the last question we had for you. So thank you, Andrada. We look forward to you coming on and learning, continuously learning from you. And I believe, yep, you have your uh, Twitter linked here. So that way we can go follow you and learn more. Thank you again. Thank you so much. It was really great joining and I'm looking forward to the rest of the session. Thank you. Thank you.